I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite everyone who can to stand up. We do this in reverence to the reading of the Bible, the Word of the Lord. And tonight we're going to read in the Old Testament in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2. Nehemiah, chapter 2. In the very beginning of verse 2, it says the following. Para melhor compreensão, comprehend better his word every time that the brother hears somebody saying something regarding the king, Artaxerxes, you will associate the picture of the king Artaxerxes with the person, a wonderful person of the Lord Jesus. And every time that you hear uh, speaking about the person of Nehemiah, you associate the person of Nehemiah as being you, as being my own life. And the Bible says that in the 20th, 20th year of the King Artaxerxes, the word says that wine was placed before him. And the Bible says that, uh, as Nehemiah was saying, then I took the wine and I gave to the king. And it happened, my brethren, that this was an activity that Nehemiah had done for a very long time. He was the cupbearer for the king. And he had joy in serving the king. Every time that he would go to be at the presence of the king to serve him. He always did that with his heart, with his face filled with joy. And it so happened that the word says, however, Nehemiah was never set before the king. But on that day, Nehemiah enters before the presence of the king and there was a sadness in his life. And I want to tell my brethren, I want to tell you that this feeling can be inside of the heart of anyone here tonight. And I remember of an experience that I had in my life of one day when I was very sad and I went to pray and I prayed, prayed and prayed to the Lord and I asked the Lord to speak with me on the word and then I opened the, the word and it said my eyes are filled with sadness and how many times sadness have not come into our life and uh, bring sadness to your heart. Um, it, and that happened to Nehemiah. And he enters into the presence of the king to serve him. And he was not expecting the king to notice such thing. And I want to tell you that King Jesus is the one who always surprises us. The Lord Jesus is the one who knows our heart, 
He knows our life. And it might happen that if you entered here in this place, no one will be able to find out what is bringing sadness to your heart. Nobody will realize. But the king, he knows. He knows all things. And there is a Bible verse that says the following. He knows the secrets of my heart. And it was a secret that was inside of the heart of Nehemiah. And maybe sadness is bringing you down tonight. Maybe sadness took over your life last week. Or maybe you're going to go through sadness in the future. Nobody knows. But the king knows. He notices. In order to exemplify this, I'm going to transport you all the way to the New Testament. Do you remember when that woman touched on Jesus' garment? And Jesus stops and says, somebody touched me. And the disciples that didn't have uh, the same sens sensibility as Jesus, they were men. They said, Lord, the, the multitude squeezes you back and forth. And now you ask, ask him if somebody touched you. But the king is sens sensitive to your heart and to mine. Somebody touched me. He said, somebody touched me because virtue came out of me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Bible says then that when Nehemiah entered into, into the presence of the king, with this sadness, the king says, in the verse that we read here, why uh, should your face not be sad? And the, why is your face sad? Since you are not sick, because it is normal for someone when the person is sick to be sad. You're sick. You go through the affliction of infirmity. The hope to get out of this situation, whoever is sick is sad. And then the king says, you're not sick, why are you sad? And this sadness is not sadness. This is nothing but sorrow of heart, the, thing, the king said. And when Nehemiah heard this, he said, So I fear greatly. And he said, Hail the king. May the king live forever. Like someone was saying, the king realized that today I enter in a different way in his presence. The king noticed that my heart is in sadness. The king paid attention to my life. And in other words, the king, he is worried about me. I'm not going to give a mess, send a message to you. You are important to God. You are important to Jesus. There's no moment in your life in which the eyes of God and his hands are not upon you. May the king live forever. And now we say, Hallelujah to the King Jesus, to him all the glory, to, all, to him all the praise and honor, because he knows what goes on in our hearts. And now Nehemiah is beginning to say the reason of his sadness. So here is the message from the Holy Spirit for us. Are you sad? Tell Jesus, the king. And Nehemiah could not speak to anyone. And you know why? Because nobody would have the word he wanted to hear. The solution that he needed to remove that sadness from his heart. So then he seeks, to seek someone that could. He goes before the prince of the one that could do can do all things. And today you came to this place. It is simple. That's true. But this is the house of the Lord. The house of God. And the Bible says, If my people that call by my name 
kneel down, pray, and humble themselves. I will hear them from the high heavens, and God will ordain the blessing. And then I'm going to say, in the name of the, the King Jesus, and He has already ordained. May the King live forever. Why should my face not be sad? Why my heart not be sad? When the city, now He says this, the reason, when the city, the place of my father's tombs, lies a waste and its gates are burnt with fire, Nehemiah says everything. I'm going to say that's wonderful. When we say to the king everything that is within our hearts. And now it's time for you to say this. Why would I not be sad in your heart? If I'm leaving this problem inside my house, that door had not been opened yet. Why would I not be sad? My heart is I'm this in this situation. It doesn't matter. Tell the king. You know why? Because the king, the king can't do. He can't give a word. Take action in your life. And this sadness will be reproached in the name of Jesus. And the word said the following. After Nehemiah, Nehemiah said all those things, the king said to 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 him. Look, that's serious. The king uh, symbolizes the King Jesus, and Nehemiah symbolizes us. And the king said to me, that's very profound. What do you request? Can you imagine you with a sad heart that the king, uh, you present before the king, and the king tells you, what do you, what do you request? So now let's stop a little bit and think about this. You know what Nehemiah said, uh, has done? You know what Nehemiah did? So I pray to the God of heaven. No, he didn't. He oh, was not hasty in his request, in his petition. So I pray to the to the God of heavens, and I said to the king, another profound thing, if it is please, if it pleases the king, some people want to give orders to the king, Lord, do this, Lord, open this door, Lord, reproach this problem, Lord, remove this difficulty. Now, that's not how it goes. See what Nehemiah said, if it pleases the king. We need to learn, my brethren, how to pray. We need to learn how to relate, have a relationship with the king. Lord, if it pleases you, that door that is closed, open. I'm not going to give you a word. The, the door that God opens, nobody closes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, if it pleases you, I want to come to my house tonight and I want to see everything resolved. I want to leave this place tonight with new, with a new joy, with a new purpose. If it is, if it pleases the King, and that's different. If it pleases the King, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, Amen. Is it possible that we are? being accepted in the presence of, of the King. We have been tonight when we bent at our knee and made mention of the power of the blood of Jesus. So then he continues saying, if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the seat of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. Then the king said to me, How long will your journey be? So, so then when I read this, I thought many times, why would the king ask this? How long your trip will be? 
and when will you return? And the word that came to my heart, you know what it was? Is that Artaxerxes had great pleasure in the life of Nehemiah, serving him every day. As I'm going to say here, Jesus takes pleasure. Jesus rejoices after a difficult day that many of you had had working hard of a day of affliction and sadness. They left everything behind and came here. You know why? Because it's good to be in the presence of the King. How long your your journey be? And when we return, you know, Nehemiah, I want you to be here in my presence because you are a good servant. You serve me with joy. You serve me well. And I'm pleased with your work. And that's what the king wants to tell you. Is your face sad in your heart? This body is a temple of the Holy Spirit of God. It is not a place for sadness, but for joy and the blessing of the Holy Spirit of God.
there's a spiritual gift and I need to be told here. A servant saw that tonight it was served to each one of us here. A comb of honey. And it, this honey was would help in a uh, uh, circulation of blood. And there was a man that came to the service tonight with a heart wounded, sad, because of the concerns with the things that are appropriate of this life, and especially with his professional life. In the service, the honey was placed on his heart, and the wounds were cured, healed, and he left the service tonight understanding that it is necessary to f seek first the sweetness of this honey of the eternity, because all the other things will be added on to you. Amen. The servant also saw a moving truck that stopped here in the church, and the belongings that were there were of a man, and the angels would begin to begin to unload the truck because this man was moving without the Lord and it was said that he should remain in this place there's no better place than to be in the body to be in the church to be at God's feet to be in the presence of the King Amen the Lord has so shown, has shown in a vision that there was an operation that was made in the life of each one here the Lord was moving in a special way in, the, in uh, our spiritual life, renewing, and that's what we're going to do uh, right now. We're going to plead to the Lord in prayer. We're going to invite the pastor, the deacons, and ushers, and the brother who kneel down, whatever you are. We're going to pray for our life. Tonight, the service of prayer also, and supplication to the Lord. The Lord has brought you here. Because he has a blessing for your life, for your heart. The instruments are going to be playing a song to the Lord. Nehemiah was before the king. And we are also before the King Jesus tonight. The king has the right word for our hearts. The king has the healing. The king has the deliverance. The King has the operation of miracles. The King is powerful. Glory to God. Let us pray with the laying of hands. My servants, my glory, fills this place. Rejoice, because I have already searched within your hearts, and I tell you that we'll, you will leave this place with my blessing in your hearts, and I tell you that much more I want to do still during this week. You're going to have experiences, wonderful experiences with me in prayer, opening up my word, praising my name, you will see great signs and operations that I'm going to do in your lives and in your homes. And now I reproach any sadness, any preoccupation, and I tell you, the, the help for you, the comfort, the blessing. You already know where to look for. I have blessed you in a rich way, your lives. And tonight, I'm blessing you and bless with the name of the Lord. Glory to God. The brethren may, may stand up. Praise the Lord. Praise the holy name, Lord. Because, in fact, your presence 
is real in our midst. Glorify the Lord for yet another night of blessings of vi and victories, Lord. To be able to hear a sweet voice, to be able to hear your advices, and to know, Lord, that we're going to leave this place fortified in your presence. Receive our adoration, our service in adoration to your name. The prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may sit down. We have already prayed for the brethren. The Lord has already manifested. The gifts have already been shared. But if there is still someone needs an assistance, an individual assistance, we are making ourselves available to you. I'd like to remind that at 9 o'clock the intercession group will be gathered and our service is going to be Saturday at 6 o'clock in the morning. Or uh, early dawn service. Amen. 